Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our EA Weekly series. And today we are going to be talking about Selenium Page Object Model versus Cypress App Action. So we have not discussed about these real differentiation between Selenium Page Object Model versus Cypress App Action ever in our EA Weekly or even in our course. So we are going to be talking about that in this particular video. Alright, so let's get started. So before jumping into the actual differentiation between Selenium page object model versus Cypress app action, let's see the common problem that we always encounter or the questions that we always have while working with the UI application automation. The one is UI is always flaky and it's always kind of failing because of the application change or something like that. So you may be getting into this kind of problems many times and you may be encountering this kind of problem most of the time. And the next problem is UI automation testing is keep on repeating the same action for each and every test that you're actually running. For instance, for a performing a certain action, you maybe need to log into your application many times and then you have to navigate to certain menus and then you have to go through that particular module and then you might need to test that particular functionality. So it's like you are going to repeat the same action to test a particular module but you still have to go through many different level to achieve that particular stuff. So that's the problem uh, that you might be encountered or maybe you might have seen that before you get into the particular module because of some reason or maybe because of some change or maybe because of the timeout in your application you may not even reach to that particular point and your test will fail. So now you might even don't know that why this particular test has got failed. Is it because of the particular module got any problem or the uh, problem is with the other uh, pages or other navigation system of your application which has got this particular problem and these kinds of issues you might have encountered many times while you are automating your application. So in order to resolve this problem and again you can ask like is this something related with the page object model versus Cypress app action again that's not much but it is pretty close to and that's what we're going to be discussing in this particular video. All right, so let's see the actual differentiation between the Selenium page object model versus Cypress app action. Selenium page object model is kind of very, very popular among community and you might have seen that there are so many different documentation and at least I have released so many different videos on page object model for Selenium C Sharp, Selenium Java, Protractor, Xamarin, Appium, and I have released for many different languages and tools for that matter. So page object model is kind of very, very interesting because it's there for a pretty long time now. But Cypress app action is not even close to people know what it is. And there are so many different confusion whether to go with app action or what is this described app action of Cypress, which is kind of very, very new and people really don't know about it. But that's the thing, you don't really have a lot of information regarding that whereas page object model is kind of very, very mature and if you're going to implement that it's going to be very very easy because you get a lot of different documentation on that. And page object model is like a wrapper for your actual DOM of your page. So for instance if you have a DOM or a page within your application you might have seen that there are so many controls available and for each and every control you'll be writing that in your page object model class and then you will try to write the method for that like action it is going to perform and then you will try to replicate exactly how the page is actually being built and you also sometimes give the same name for the particular page class as if like the application page. Whereas app action is very less or nothing to do with the DOM itself and maybe you can also write your own virtual DOM within the app action and then you can call it privately and then you can even close that before even actually it's been used within your application's DOM. And that's the main power of the app action of the Cypress itself. It is mainly to avoid the DOM replication of the page in Cypress app action. And in page object model we use the DOM as the white box of our testing. So we just try to consume the whole DOM. We try to replicate exactly the same thing within our page class, but we keep all the rest of the thing as a black box. For instance, the XHR or the internal APIs of the application or even the internal methods of the application. We don't even worry about that. We just worry about the application's DOM 
and then the application's functionality in the page object model, we don't never even consider about other stuffs within our application. Whereas app action try to invoke the internal methods of the application, something like you're gonna invoke a particular piece of the method within our application, which is gonna perform a loading of an element within your page, or maybe before even rendering a particular uh, element within our page, you're gonna be calling that particular method and see what's really gonna be happen behind that. You can also automate the XHR of your application or calling the internal libraries of your page or even you're going to extend the whole application because Cypress runs on the application contest and it's more like a developer kind of thing which Selenium does not really have as of now. And that's the reason for Cypress, everything is white box, not just the DOM, but also the internal XHR or the APIs or the methods of our application. And the good thing about the page object model in Cypress is that it's kind of fairly very, very easy to write because if you have a knowledge on identifying the element of a page, or maybe you can use Crowpath, one of my friend in Automate IQ has written the Crowpath to identify the page elements, or you can even generate the XPath or CSS or different identifiers as a plugin within a Chrome or Firefox browser, and then you can start using it to identify the element, and you can take the locator, and then you can put that in the page object model, and boom, you're done with that. So that's the power of the page object model. I mean, very less knowledge is required for writing a page object model class, whereas in the app action of Cypress, you need to know what's really happening behind the scenes in your applications, internals, what are the methods being used, and what is the XHR being called, what is the APIs being called, for that matter, and you need to have a clear understanding of the application's internals before you can actually even use the app actions in practice. So that's the real difference between the page object model versus the app action of Cypress. And page object model is kind of very, very flaky. The reason is because it is fully depending upon the document object model of a page. And if any one of the UI component changes or if the developer go and change any one of the element identifier, then probably your test is gonna fail or maybe you gotta go back and change the identifier within your page object model class so that you can recognize that. And that's the problem with our whole automation itself. So we're always relying on the UI and because the UI is kind of flaky because the developers are gonna change some of the classes or XPath or something like that, then your test is gonna be failing on that. So it's like page object model doesn't really maintain any state of your application because if the state of the application changes, your test is gonna change because it is stateless at this particular point of time. Whereas in Cypress, because you're not gonna be relying fully on the document object model, you may not encounter these kinds of problem and the reason being you're directly calling the internals of the application's API or the method to perform an action. That's the reason the failure rate in Cypress is much, much lower than compared to page object model. And that's the power of app action itself as climbed by Cypress team. Page object model makes the test a little bit slower than compared to the non-page object model uh, test that you can write even in Selenium or Java. The reason being, you're gonna be writing even a further classes or a wrapper across the particular test that you're gonna be running that. And that's the reason it's making things slower. But in Cypress, you can see that there is no such thing. You're gonna directly call the methods or libraries of the applications internal, and it is much, much faster than compared to the code written in the page object model. And that's the reason sometimes the code runs so fast then the applications actually behave and you may be seeing some kind of timeouts. It's kind of a disadvantage in Cypress and that's the reason you need to maintain the synchronization of when the state of the application changes or if the particular component has been loaded or things of that nature. It's pretty much like Selenium, like how you do for reading for an element to be loaded or things of that nature, exactly the same thing. So the real purpose of why I say this is because Cypress test is gonna be running much faster and the reason being, it is not using the page object model, it is using the app action. And because it is app action, it's gonna be calling all the methods which is available internally within the application. And finally, as I said before in the starting, page object model has got a lot of community support, whereas app action has got little or no community support. And maybe you need to know exactly how the internals of your application actually works so that you can collaborate with your developer and see what's really going on with your application and then you need to figure out which method that you can write or how can you extend or how you can hook that particular method within your Cypress or you can also call sci.invoke to invoke the internal methods of your application to perform certain action. For instance, if you're gonna be calling an invoke method to render a page, 
I'm just going to call a database call within our application. You can just call the invoke method of the database populating data method so that you can see that your application is going to render all the data for you instead of you trying to type that particular value each and every time and making your test to be more flaky than compared to what you can invoke within this particular method. It's kind of very, very interesting because that's what is the whole purpose of our automation testing. So our purpose of automation testing should remain just to test the application instead of complicating the automation test itself. And that's the reason Team in Cypress believe that app action is gonna resolve the most painful problems that is being suffered by the Selenium or rest of the tools available in the community than compared to what app action is gonna to bring to the community. So that's it guys, this is the comparison between the Selenium page object model versus app action. I have already created the videos on app action and the difference between page object model and app action in our intern automation testing with Cypress course, which is available in Udemy. You can go ahead and see the difference and you can also see that great feature the Cypress team is providing for the community in different manner, which is not available in many different tools in the market today. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.